Anyway, I want to continue this series on the millennial reign that does not exist in the Bible. Okay, just to keep touch with it and uh, to keep an eye on what's being talked about. And, and you'll see here, I do a, you know, a search for millennial reign and I do a uh, filter by upload date and we see, you know, all these people talking about a millennial reign of Christ that does not exist in the Bible. It's not in Revelation 20. It's not anywhere. Now, a couple of things that are interesting here. One, you'll notice here it goes, you know, you got what, five, six, seven in the last 24 hours. Um, and then you kind of scroll down a little bit and you notice, you know, I've been talking about this quite a bit and they're all gone except from the one I did three weeks ago right I mean that's crazy because I've done quite a few and they're just not on this list you have to scroll down a little bit to find one two right there I've done several but nevertheless who cares nobody's listening anyway so it doesn't matter now, um, you know, these are an hour and a half sermons, and what they do is they get their teaching from somebody else that has no understanding of the Bible whatsoever. And this is a problem. It sounds harsh when I say that, but it's true. And because it's not in the Bible, I'll show you real quickly. If you've never opened up a Bible before, I would encourage you to open up the Bible, go to to Revelation 20 and you'll see here that these mentions of a thousand years are not giving any suggestion at all that Jesus reigns a thousand years it says they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years right there in verse 4 and also in verse 6 they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years and of course we know that right now we that are saved we that are born of God are a royal priesthood and a holy nation a peculiar people all right we are the priest of God and of Christ right now and the second death has no power over us that are born of God all right we are the people of God, and that's all this is saying right here. And then obviously, you have uh, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up. Our enemy is gathered at our feet. This is a prophecy that goes all the way back to Genesis 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Right here is when. Jesus stomps his heel on the head of the serpent, destroying all wickedness forever. All right, and of course, this is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great white throne, and him that sat on it, obviously it's Jesus, right? And whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. This is parallel with what we read in Matthew 24, verse 29. When the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All right, this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. This is all talking about the same event. All right, after the thousand years are expired, Satan gathers together his people, the unsaved. Meanwhile, we're lifted up, we're changed in the twinkling of an eye. First the dead in Christ, and those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And of course, this is also parallel with what we read in Matthew 13, when Jesus describes uh, the kingdom of heaven in the last day, the end of the world, when the wheat are gathered in his barn and the tares are gathered to be burned okay this is the end of the world 
All right. So at the end of the world, unsaved are gathered and destroyed. The saved are gathered and changed from in, uh, from mortal to immortal, from corrupted to incorrupted. All right. Very simple stuff. I just want to share with you the truth. It's very simple. It's not complicated. It's not rocket science. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. All right. This is all throughout the Bible. All right. Over and over and over and over and over and over. At the great sound of a trumpet, it's the end of the world. In fact, Jesus is asked that specific question, what shall be the sign of thy coming? and of the end of the world all right easy stuff but people are getting it wrong because like i said they are getting it from somebody else that teaches it that has no understanding of the scripture whatsoever all right that's they're not getting it from the bible i just showed it to you it's not in the bible nowhere in the bible not in revelation 20 not anywhere does it suggest this idea that Jesus reigns a thousand years. In fact, it's contrary to the whole scripture itself. All right, and I'll show you real quickly in verse 33. Uh, in Luke chapter 1, verse 33, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Not a thousand years, but forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Jesus does not reign a thousand years, he reigns forever during this thousand years of Revelation 20 we reign with him now why is it uh, different than any other time period it's because right now we are born of the Spirit of God and this is available for everybody Jesus changed that when he was born from his mother who was a virgin Jesus had no earthly father and he was born of both flesh and spirit and he, can't, he was manifest in the flesh God was manifest in the flesh okay so this is a unique time period from the time of his birth death resurrection and ascension to heaven to the time of his promised return very unique time period and we that believe in him, whosoever believes in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. This is a unique time period. That's why it's described as a thousand years. It's not a literal one thousand years. No man knows the day or the hour. Okay, this is just denoting, it denotes a long period of time. All right. Now, that's it's very simple stuff, man. It's really not complicated at all. Let's take a look at somebody here. I think there was one that I wanted to go over. If I can find it. Oh, right there it is. There, there we go. Look at these guys. 141,000 views. Well, these guys are popular and you can see why because they they put together this stuff here this is incredible amazing really neat the 144,000 who are these saints who will rise to power in the last days <laughs> but unfortunately it's like they're teaching a whole different religion that is completely separate and devoid of what the scripture actually says all right I won't get into that but I'm just doing a little looking up here and I, I noticed I got a, a video on Vimeo and I just want to show you something real quickly make sure it don't play all right so can we do it this way There, and we can see here. If I put my cursor right up here, you'll see right here God's wrath poured out. We return with Christ. Okay, here's the problem. All right, the, 
if you notice here, it says we return with Christ up here in the right hand corner. We return with Christ. And before that, you have uh, the Antichrist rises to witness, war begins, the saints resist. That's not scriptural at all. So, this is very odd. The second coming of Christ, it looks like it's the same thing is we return with Christ okay it's very strange so we're here on the earth yet we're gonna return with Christ that's not in the Bible anywhere this idea that we return with Christ not it's not in the not anywhere yeah I can't show you hey look at this Bible verse it's not anywhere in the Bible nowhere does it suggest we return with Christ. In fact, it says the exact opposite. All right, let's minimize this real quickly. I'll get back to that. So, I mean, it's just odd. It's just very, very odd. They're like teaching a whole another religion. And God knows what these people believe. I don't know what they believe. They don't believe the Bible. Because the Bible is very clear. At the end of the world... The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Remember what we read in Matthew 24. With the sound of the trumpet and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, the dead shall rise first. We're not coming back with Christ. We are rising up to meet the Lord in the air. All right, so you, you got a big problem here, fellas. Now, I, I get it. You can make a lot of money, and you can persuade a lot of people with this stuff. This idea that, oh, the Antichrist is going to come, and he's going to there's going to be a great big war. That sounds fantastic, man. It does. But it's not true. The Antichrist is already here. The scripture is already clear on that. Been here for a very long time. There are seven kings. Five are fallen. One is, and one is yet to come. This is a succession of kings. And Daniel very clearly describes four beasts until the end time. He lists three of them by name. The fourth one we can deduce by reading Luke chapter 2 verse 1. And we see that the beast that was and is not and yet is, is a transformation from a physical empire into a spiritual empire. This is really not complicated. Uh, it's very simple scriptural stuff, but this stuff here with the Antichrist rises, two witnesses war begins, the saints resist, that's not in the Bible anywhere. I mean, we could get into all, discounting all of this verse after verse, but just read the Bible. You can see it for yourself. Now, this is no, there's no logical... No, nothing logical about this at all first the dead in Christ and those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord yet these guys say nah that's wrong we will return with Christ that's not in the Bible this idea that the Antichrist rises and two witnesses of war and the Saints resist that's not in the Bible you got Antichrist that's in the Bible two witnesses that's in the Bible war that's in the Bible Saints that's in the Bible but the way this is, this is not in the Bible. Now you got words that are in the Bible, phrases that are in the Bible, but the, the ideas are not in the Bible anywhere at all. Okay? Uh, just nonsense. Seven years, that's not in the Bible. You just, you got just a whole thing <laughs> of false prophecy right here the whole kit and caboodle if you will the whole thing all of this is wrong every bit of it it's all wrong it's very simple Jesus makes it very simple when he comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world we are changed in a twinkling of an eye we are uh, we take off this mortality and we put on immortality all right very simple stuff and all wickedness is destroyed very easy simple stuff this here nonsense complete rubbish 
None of this is scriptural. All right. I just wanted to share that with you, share with you and show you that there are so many people getting this wrong and how long will it be until we find somebody else that is getting it right. It's not complicated, fellas. It's not popular to teach something different. It's popular to cling on to what everybody else is teaching. I get it. Simple. You don't have to actually read and believe the Bible. You can just uh, look up a sermon, watch a YouTube video, and just echo what they say. I mean, that's the way we're trained as little children from the time we uh, enter the public school system. Don't think, but echo what you're being taught. And so we see this happening more so ever to ever. We see that happening today more so than ever before. It's incredible. It's incredible, and I, I'm showing it to you. Right, I'm putting it right in front of your eyes. All these people talking about a millennial reign that's not found in the Bible anywhere at all. I mean, it takes doesn't even take five minutes to read Revelation 20. Read it for yourself. It's not there. I get it. There's a million people a million people out there teaching it but it's not in there in the Bible at all just read it it's not there we live and reign with Christ right now how can you rightly say that you are saved if you're not reigning with Christ right now it doesn't make any sense all right and uh, you know uh, I was listening to somebody earlier so let me cover one other issue and then I'll then I'll end this. Let me think about this for a second. I heard somebody talking about oh Zechariah 14 talks about this zombie period. You're gonna have people in their mortal bodies living among people that in their immortal bodies, and it's just gonna be one great big zombie fest. No. That's not in the Bible, and that's not in Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Alright, just think about this verse okay this cannot conflict with anything else in the Bible number one that's important you cannot have this be a contradiction to something else that's written in the Bible number two this is a prophecy Old Testament prophecy which is very clearly explained in the New Testament specifically by the Lord Jesus himself it shall come to pass that everyone that is left so if think about it if there's coming a judgment day and the wicked are destroyed who's left it's the saved people the people that are changed in the twinkling of an eye that are resurrected into life eternal all right this is all this is saying this is explaining in a way that they might understand and it's better explained in, uh, all throughout the New Testament all throughout the New Testament whosoever believes in the Lord shall never perish shouldn't uh, what's the verse here I, I can't remember shall never perish oh, yeah. I think it's in the Bible and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Look, you can't have eternal life and lose it. Otherwise, it's not eternal, right? And so also do we have eternal life therefore we will be left after all the nations all the nations means all the people of the world all right and shall came and, and 
all the nations of the world means all the people that have ever lived and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem all every we've all come against God there's not one that's good there's not one that's righteous only Jesus is the righteous one and the only way that we could be left after the judgment of God that is coming when Jesus returns in the clouds of heaven the only way that we can be left the only way that we can pass through is if he covers our sins if he covers our iniquities right if he covers our wickedness and his righteousness then therefore are we righteous in God and we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we shall be changed forever right this it's really not that complicated I get it people make a lot of money and they get a lot of people to listen to them when they try to explain these verses in a very complicated nonsensical way and then claim extra knowledge and wisdom uh, I mean it's not complicated man it, in my opinion you have to read this verse and not believe a word of it in order to come up with this idea that there will be mortal people living among immortal people after the resurrection after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ you have to not believe what you're reading that's the only way to come up with it alright so I think that's all I wanted to share today but to me this is amazing I mean nobody nobody listens it's incredible nobody listens how long how long do I have to continue to preach this because like I, I've been demonstrating I want to move on from this I want to move on and start talking about other things uh, specifically what will it be like after the resurrection because there's a lot of good stuff that pertains to life after the judgment of God a lot of good stuff, man. A lot of good stuff. I want to get into that, but I can't let this go. I can't let this go when I'm seeing all these people teaching this nonsense here. This absolute rubbish right here. Ridiculous. This is not Bible. It sounds Bible. looks Bible. But when you actually read the Bible, and I wonder, are these people even reading the Bible? They're preaching something. The words of the Lord are pure words. Do you believe that? Do you believe the Bible you hold in your hands is from God? I'm telling you, you ought to. You should. You absolutely should. That's how if you're gonna have any sort of knowledge and understanding, it's by faith. Without faith, how can you expect to understand anything? Let's go to Hebrews real quick. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. You don't have faith if you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands. If you're looking up uh, serpent's notes or whatever you call those things, the little footnotes, if you're looking up the the concordances and the you know you're doing the you know the the Google uh, translation of what what's this say in Hebrew? Oh, oh well, what's that matter, man? Are well, you taking something written in Hebrews and looking it up in 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 uh, the Hebrew language? I think and you're gonna get you don't understand Hebrew language. You barely understand English. 
you don't believe it in English, you're not going to believe it in Hebrew. So it really comes down to, do you trust God? Do you believe the Bible that you hold in your hands? Every word of God is pure. Every word. So begs the question, where can I get every word of God? Well, you can get it in the King James Bible. In the English language. It's in the King James Bible. Alright? If you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands, you don't believe in any Bible at all. And if you don't believe in any Bible at all, how can you have any understanding of anything that's written in the Bible? Even this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, when a person has faith, in the Lord the veil shall be taken away the key in the secret if you will the mystery is faith if you want to have knowledge and understanding of the Word of God the key is faith it's always been about faith all right. 